You don't believe in dinosaurs. No, that's all bullshit. Okay, please Dude, that's explain this to me. Museums all across the world full of a bunch of fake bones. Why do you think it's fake? Because they are fake. But if I don't you believe consider- in evolution. Oh. I don't. Oh. Okay. I've never believed in evolution. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm more of like a, I have to like witness it to actually believe it type person. I need to actually discover them myself. You need to discover the bones I don't yourself. believe it. Like it's all phony baloney. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, my guest is a Twitch streamer and adult performer who was nominated for two AVN Awards this year. And she was just crowned the Professional Newcomer of the Month on Pornhub, which is new as far as I know. Let's welcome Dan Dangler. Hi. (laughs) Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. So first off, I'm kind of curious about your name because yeah. it's unusual. Everybody asks. So oh. I got to ask too, where did it come from? I say that it was like from soccer. It's just a username in video gaming. That's okay. the whole point of it. It's just, it sounds like a guy as it well. Does. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. Like if somebody clicks on my Twitch, they're going to stay on my Twitch for like six seconds longer and be like, oh, that's not a guy. So it's just a little bit longer they remember me for. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted something like that. So that's all it really came from. I just tried to get something that rhymed with my name. Okay, (laughs) interesting. And it was something that like would be unexpected. Yeah. So people would be like, wait a minute, that's. Yeah, I went with the Dan because everybody, and it's it's such a male dominated like area too. Mm -hmm. And so. Video gaming. Yeah. So that, and that's where you got started. You got started on Twitch. So tell us a little bit about those origins. Well, I actually started, like I got into content creation. Like I did a little bit of modeling for fun, Um, but that didn't go very far because I got with a modeling agency and I hated it because they Mm. were so like uptight and just like watch. I just, it wasn't my thing. This is mainstream modeling. Yeah. So I did like auto shows and all that stuff. And, um. And I did some modeling for Audi and that was like really cool, but I didn't like, I didn't like it. And so then I went to Twitch and I played video games. Didn't expect it to blow up. I was just looking for some friends to Mm -hmm. hang out with while I was in school, you know, because it's hard to, you don't get a lot of free time in school. Mm -hmm. You just have like, you know, an hour, then you got to get back to writing a paper or something. Mm -hmm. So I, um, it was just my fun little escape while I was in school and then it just blew up all of a sudden and I was like well what the hell do I do with this like you know where were you when you were going to school you don't have to say the name of the school I was in well I was in it's called Oakland University and it's in Michigan okay and I was working and I was teaching like teens and taking care of a building full of like teenagers and going to school and then I just streamed on the side for fun Wait, you were taking care of a building full of teenagers? Yeah, it wasn't you my... You were like a, like a landlord? Like a no, apartment um, manager? So it was this place. It was just like educate like children after school, but like fun. Kind of like a after school wreck. Okay. Kind of kind of deal. Okay. I don't know. Boring. But I hated it. <laughs> if you're watching this old boss, I hated that job. <laughs> Stupid name. Club Educate. Anyway. Why did you hate it? Because, I mean, who... If I'm 16, I don't want to go to a place called Club Educate the hell it's for teenagers that's boring wait hold on hold on you're 16 you're a teenager yeah i'm saying it was for like teenagers and stuff to come and like hang out at and have fun but also like learn you didn't if my mom dropped me off at club educate after school after i've been you know learning all day you don't want to learn anymore no enough learning yeah the kids (laughs) didn't either they didn't want to nobody wanted to be there that's why it didn't work (laughs) anyway so uh, that job went under so okay so you start gaming and you're streaming on twitch and so you initially just went on there literally just a game like you weren't seeing Mm -hmm. it as a career no not at all and then so how did it get so big well people just kept joining well so i would go from video gaming to um like just chatting and mm-hmm. stuff like that and put on my makeup and talk to the couple people that I met. Then all of a sudden it just start, started getting bigger and bigger, more people. Then I was like, oh shit, I have to like put like a whole like 
script to this thing, not script, but like outline to what mm-hmm. I'm actually going to be doing during these things. And it just slowly started to become more and more like real and more, I don't know, perf- pro, I guess you would say, versus being just like someone who did it for fun. Right. You know? And then I like have a little bit of experience with Twitch, but not yeah. much. So once you get to like a certain audience size, right, you kind of move up in terms of whether or not you can be an affiliate and make money. Yeah. And how does like the monetary thing work on Twitch? You get money pretty soon okay. after afterwards. You just have to have a couple of viewers at a time concurrently, which as a female, you can get, get affiliate like that. Yeah. Because it's a male dominated platform. So you're like guaranteed to get viewers for sure because males right. want to talk to females. But um, it's a really hard platform to hit the like top as a yeah. female because it is very male dominated. Um, you know what I mean? Like they. So it's like easy to get into that kind of mid range, but it's exactly. hard to get to the top top. It's extremely easy to get to the mid range. Right. Like okay. Easy to affiliate. Easy to make a job out of it as a female. Yeah. But it's so hard. You can't. You can't become a top streamer as a female. It's impossible. Really? Yeah. There isn't any. There's not no. a single one. They've done like top 100 streamers, and where there's been like one or two girls in it. Wow. And stuff like that. So. What do you mm-hmm. think that is? I think it's just men relate to men more. And Mm -hmm. it's mostly men on the platform. The girls on the platform want to talk to the men. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's just a male, just currently male dominated at the moment. So, yeah. So, okay. So, at like, at what point did you realize you're like, wow, I'm doing really well? Like, how many followers constitutes like a really strong Twitch account? Um, Well, I would say when I started hitting numbers that my, people I was watching were hitting, like my people I looked up to were hitting. Like, and I would say that started around 300, 500 viewers at a time. Mm -hmm. That was when I was like, oh, like this is, that's crazy. I remember looking at so-and-so and and they had that many and being like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then it just, you know, keeps growing and growing Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. Are you streaming anymore? Yeah, I stream four times a week. And how many, (laughs) how many viewers do you generally have these days? It so depends. I'm definitely over 3K, but like I can, I hit 12K the other day doing this like thing where you, you hold your boobs and you pretend that you, you're not wearing a shirt. Okay. It's just the meta. That's what they they call it. And, um, and you look naked and I had 12,000 viewers. Wow. It's just little. Didn't teases. Twitch get really anal about, um, Imp- nudity like implied nudity like didn't they ban like streaming in bikinis for a while but now I heard they're allowing certain people to go topless yeah it's definitely they're just trying to go with the trends you know um if they have competitors they definitely want to go with you know we're going to be more lenient now mm-hmm. towards the nudity if mm-hmm. competitors go away they're going to go towards you know, making their sponsors happier, which is less nudity, you know, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So I think it just comes down to because they did the you could do implied nudity. And I was sitting there, you know, doing implied nudity with 12K. And then three days later, they pulled that rule really quickly. They're like, that's not going to work for us. Like our sponsors or somebody's not happy right now. The implied so, nudity rule. Yeah. So they pulled it really quickly. Oh, wow. So they're trying. They're really trying to give us all we can have but they have to be in the app store and stuff like that yeah that's true it's like that it's that struggle that yeah. back and forth that so many platforms are dealing with these days yeah so what inspired you to branch out into adult oh i mean the money <laughs> <laughs> i mean honest answer <laughs> honestly nothing else i'm not that really um i say this all the time i'm not that crazy of a sexual person like i'm not I don't do this because it's I wouldn't I'm not part of the lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to orgy parties a- after, you know, tonight. You're mm-hmm. not going to see me at those lifestyle parties, not that I'm against it. Whatever floats your boat. Um, but you're you're just not going to see me there. I I just really like that I can earn m- money based off of just like what I have. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's and it's something that I don't mind doing and it's something that a lot of people do mind doing. So mm-hmm. I think it's a perfect fit for me. Mm-hmm. Um I don't mind being naked. I don't mind doing all those things. So it's like perfect. But it's not like your your passion. It's not my passion. My passion saving animals and that I tell everybody that too. Um all my like fans know that 
um, my first passion is saving animals. I told them they're my second passion. <laughs> I love them to death, but like animals is really my passion. Yeah. If I wasn't trying to like do, open up my own sanctuary or something like something like that, then I wouldn't be doing this. I don't think. Where do you think that comes from? That I've love always, of saving animals. I've always loved animals, and I had, I don't know, I've always had animals growing up. If I was upset, I went to my animals. I made them emotional support animals, even mm-hmm. if they weren't emotional yeah. support animals. Yeah. And, yeah, and they just always slept with me growing up, and I don't know. I, I became a vegetarian when I was in seventh grade, and, oh, wow. and my parents were like, you're not going to be a vegetarian, and I was like, yes, I am, and. Just wow. something weird in my head that I've always known mm-hmm. that I was, like, meant to do. So mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's – you it your relationship with animals lacks that complicated, you know, entanglement that you have with people. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> They're just – they just love you because they love you, and that's, that's kind of all that there is to it. And there's something nice and simple about that kind of love. Yeah, and, like, a lot of people go to school for things that – they're not really passionate about and they're in jobs that they're not really passionate about. So when I say that, like, this isn't my first passion, a lot of people get surprised by that. But I'm like, I'm just being honest, you know, it's just where I've ended up in life and I don't mind where I am. I'm very grateful for the position I'm in. I like my job. It's not like I dislike it. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I want to be somewhere else down the line is my goal. You know, it's really interesting that you say that because I think about how often adult performers are put on the defensive and how they have to always say, no, 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 I love my job. Like, I love it so much. It's everything I ever wanted. And so many people, you're right, their jobs are just what they do. They don't mind them. I mean, some people hate their jobs. Yeah. But they it's what they do to, you know, make the living that they want so they can do the things that they care about. In your yeah. case, rescuing animals. I mean, exactly. there's probably very few cashiers at Vons that are like really passionate yeah, about like you know checking I mean? out your groceries. When they do what they're do- they don't mind doing the cashier job at yeah. Vons, so they do it and yeah. they can do what they want with their life. Right. Well, and I and I know there's a lot of difference between, you know, running um, watermelons through the register and like <laughs> asparagus and broccoli and like sucking dick. I get that. Yeah. But I think that people are so shocked by the idea of having sex on camera for a living in front of people for the world to see that they can't imagine that you could do that in such a casual way. But yeah. It kind of sounds like that's sort of like what it's like for you. Yeah, it's totally. And they don't even know, like, they think that porn is so like this this thing that these super horny people and they don't know that these two people are taking breaks in between (laughs) they're getting different angles the guy sitting in the corner desperately trying to you know keep his blood flowing yeah and they don't see all these things that it's not real it's just putting on a show sure there's real stuff which is mostly the amateur stuff Mm -hmm. and whatnot and there are people who love their job like people like angela white who i've talked to behind closed doors oh yeah says, no she's i'm born for this right? yeah no she's she's <laughs> without a doubt like yeah. the perfect example of somebody who's very passionate about yeah her but like, me, there's no doubt about that me i'm like i'm not passionate about it but i don't mind doing it and you know and i and i stress to the people too like you know these are all co-workers as mm-hmm. well like you're not People are like, how do you not get emotionally attached and all this stuff, too? And I'm, they just – they don't get it. It's like a job. I, that's it how is. I describe it. And it's funny. The amount of, like, girls I talk to behind closed doors about things will admit, like, they don't they don't finish when they do scenes. Like – They don't orgasm. Okay. I don't oh. know how far I can say Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say whatever. They don't – yeah. They don't orgasm when they do scenes, you know. No. You don't know how much lube we're using it because it's – dry down there sometimes for yeah. people you're having sex with somebody that you wouldn't have sex with you wouldn't take home from the bar maybe right you know what i mean but your coworkers and you know that they're professional and you feel safe doing the scene with them so that's i don't know there's so much to it that yeah. people don't know and i just like laugh i'm like if you only knew yeah i mean <laughs> it's just like one of those things that you kind of have to experience you yeah. feel like once you work behind the scenes you kind of realize that it is very much work yeah it is very much work but like i will say though i enjoy the 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 amateur side of things so like talking to people like messaging them and stuff like that on my like only fans mm-hmm. i enjoy that stuff i do enjoy having sex mm-hmm. it's not like i hate it i just yeah like whatever but i just 
and the and the live stuff. I love live stuff. Mm -hmm. To me, that's like the stuff I really enjoy. But mm -hmm. the scenes is just more of a job for me. Yeah. No, I understand. Um, so let's talk about like how you literally got into it, right? So when did you make the decision to transition to adult? What were you made an offer or did you seek it out? I just I seeked it out myself. So girls on Twitch, all a bunch of them had OnlyFans, and I was like. No, no, I'm never going to have one. No, whatever. And really, I started to think, why am I saying that? And I realized it was because I had people in my life who were very judgmental. Mm -hmm. And so once I decided, you know what, fuck that. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's my life. Like, why am I taking other people's opinions about something into consideration when I'm being safe, all that stuff? So then I was like, screw this, opened my OnlyFans, and then it just spiraled and became what it is today right yeah so what were the first content pieces of content you put on your only fans was it just like topless stuff or i did a lot of just like sexy like modeling mm -hmm. type vibes at first and then pretty soon i did like a boob pic mm -hmm. so i'm like whatever like i said before i don't mind being mm -hmm. i don't mind being naked so put out a boob pic i got a text message from my mom of my boobs yeah and she's like blah 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 you know all this stuff like freaking was not, out. Was not happy. No. Oh my God. No. You grew up in a very religious household, right? Yeah. I'm like the only girl at my, like in porn at like my like stage, I would say, mm -hmm. that has a family that doesn't agree with what they do and like doesn't talk to them because of what they do. You're the only girl? I don't know any other girls. Oh, like, there's a lot of girls. Who? Uh, well, I mean, you can't say, but probably, but. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm. And look, people's relationships with their parents change over time. So, I mean, I've definitely had people come on this podcast and say, like, yeah, I don't talk to my parents anymore. But but that, I know that that changes over time. So I yeah. don't want to say, like, for sure. Yeah. Um, even if I could think off the top of my head who said that. Because, like I said, like, sometimes I've been, like, asking everybody. And everybody was, like, even people with, like, priests for, like, dads. Mm -hmm. and they're, like, they still talk to their, like, family and stuff like that. But, yeah. Definitely. When I decided to, like, release the judgment of them, that's when I went full-blown. Mm-hmm. So. so tell – can you tell us a little bit about growing up in your household? How strict um, were they? Oh, very strict. I couldn't wear – like, if I wore a V-neck, it was, you know, called out. You know, if I posted a bikini picture – on MySpace with me and all my friends hanging out by the pool or Facebook, whatever. Wait, on MySpace? MySpace or whatever Wait, it was. how old are you? I'm 28. Was MySpace around when you were? Yeah, I'm at the end. I'm at, I'm at the end. <laughs> I didn't feel like MySpace was so long ago. <laughs> yeah, I was on MySpace. I felt like nobody knew what MySpace oh, was Oh, I anymore. got grounded for having sexual songs on my MySpace page. Wow. Like, yeah. I got, oh, I got, I got grounded left and right. My, my parents... I don't know. Like, sometimes I'm like, was, did I grow up fucked up? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, they, I just grew up very strict household. My brother had a uh, sickness growing up, still does Crohn's disease, really. He has it really bad. And then my other brother went to Iraq. So they were always, like, on, like, worried about them. So uh -huh. I was kind of always doing my own thing. Just right. Just vibing. Right. And um, so... You, I assume, went to church every Sunday, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, until I got a little older. And, and then yeah. when, do, what are your beliefs on, I'm just always curious about people's, like, belief in, like, a higher power or God or whatnot. What are your thoughts on that now? Um, I got confirmed as a Catholic. I begged my mom not to do it mm -hmm. um, because I said I'm not sure that I want to be a Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, but she said it doesn't matter. We're going to get you confirmed, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. So I am a confirmed Catholic, but I am not a Catholic. <laughs> but do you believe like? I believe that we're here and whatever put us here doesn't want us to know why we're here. Otherwise, we would know why we're here. Hmm. That's how I feel about it. I'm like, we have the ability to like look into the future and be like, oh, this is what the future is probably going to be like. But mm -hmm. we can't look into the past and be like, what made us? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's what like. I'm like, maybe it doesn't want us to know. Like, if we mm -hmm. found out how we were made, like, I don't know, everything would explode or something. Well, I mean, maybe that would take away what we call the human experience, right? Yeah. Was, maybe we're in pods somewhere, you know? Like, <laughs> I mean, that, yes, that's, that, like, all things are possible, right? <laughs> but, I mean, maybe the part of the human experience is trying to figure out why we're here and, and what our purpose is. And, and also, like, maybe it doesn't matter. 
Yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go with it, right? I just try and I believe in karma. That's what I believe in. Yeah. So if I do something shitty or I think about if I'm like thinking about doing something shitty, I feel like something bad's going to happen to me. So I, I have the same values in that aspect mm-hmm. as a Christian per- person, mm-hmm. treat others with respect and all that stuff. But um, yeah, obviously not in the sex area. <laughs> I have a little <laughs> bit of different morals. <laughs> yeah. So and you said that you don't talk to your your parents at all anymore no they don't talk to me actually i should have said mm. it's a them thing which i actually don't mind talking about because i think it's really important for people in a position of wanting to do something but then they have parents or family in their life that are hold, like holding them back from doing it mm-hmm. like their judgment like i know a lot of people like their parents want them to be this but they want to be that you mm-hmm. know what i mean and it's like they don't become what they want because of the judgment in their life mm-hmm. and that's so shitty like you shouldn't have to conform to be somebody else for somebody else you know yeah it doesn't matter if they're your blood or not yeah and them being your blood should accept you no matter what you do as long as you're not hurting anybody else um or at least have an open mind and have open discussions with you about it um those are the things that you should receive once you decide to make the choices on your own. Right. You know, but I didn't receive those, and that made me realize maybe it's a them problem and not a yeah. me problem. And it took me so long to figure that out. I, my whole life, 28 years, I would say, to let go of my parents' grip finally yeah. and just be myself. Yeah, I mean, that's like the hardest thing. They say that your parents know how to push your buttons because they put them there, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, I have to say that that's admirable. And I've definitely had people come on the show and talk about how they had to relinquish a toxic relationship with their family and how it was really hard because, you know, we want to believe that the people who made us and the people that we grew up with are the people that should matter the most in our lives Mm -hmm. and should be the most aligned with our values and what we want. And that's not the case for everybody. No. And that shouldn't hold you back from the things that you want to do in your life. Because when you become an adult, like then you can kind of create your own family. Yeah. You don't have to be bound to the people Mm -hmm. that made you if if that relationship isn't working for you. And that's got to be a really hard thing to accept. It's really hard. And another thing is too, is like, you're only with your family. Mm -hmm. Like as a, as a young, if there's like you have a, if there's young people listening to this and they're in this position, like you're only with your family for so long if you think about it Mm -hmm. like living with them like all that stuff it's such a small part of your life the rest of your life is your life and that's something that's not really taught like you know like i this is mine i have to figure this shit out on my own like yeah it's i don't know so i'm just i think it's really important once you decide to make the choice for yourself to do that thing it really opens up your eyes to how um, you know, your relationships are with people and how they actually are treating yeah. you. It's interesting when you become an adult and you have that sudden realization that your parents aren't always right and that they're mm-hmm. just human beings like the rest of us trying to make their way in the world and they make mistakes and some of them are just not great parents, Yeah, you know, because the thing is like anybody can have children. Yeah. Like you don't have to like take a test or like pass a course, you know, um, <laughs> So it's just, uh, I mean, I remember like, cause you know, I grew up, I think probably like most kids, I grew up thinking that like everything my parents said was right Mm -hmm. and everything was gospel. And I remember getting to a a point when I was growing up and I was like, you know, I think that's not right. You're wrong about that. And then like seeing the flaws in them that I never wanted to see before and then coming to terms with that and then accepting them is like, you know what? They're doing the best they have, they can with what they have. Yeah. And they don't have the best coping skills in this situation or in this situation. And Mm -hmm. like, that's just how it is. The weirdest part for me is that they raised me with these values Mm -hmm. that they don't hold. You know what I mean? Is I have such different like values than them, you know, Mm -hmm. like the value of family and, you know, friendship and hearing others out before you cutting, cutting them off and, Mm -hmm. Just all those, like, not name-calling your family members. Just, I have those values that they instilled in me. And then to think that they also had them and realize they they don't. Yeah. It's weird. Like, a really weird, like, juxtaposition. Yeah. How the hell did I get these, but you don't have them? Yeah. You know? 
yeah maybe lacking that self-awareness that you're not you're not living like the the things that you're trying to teach your kid like you're not actually but yeah it's weird internalizing they definitely thing. what is it you you are what you teach they yeah definitely didn't do that or whatever they they taught what they taught yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so so you said that you grew up in a house where you feel like you couldn't be yourself um so do you feel like you're living as your true self now yeah, I struggle with like really, really bad anxiety because mm -hmm. of my like growing up and just not being myself, not feeling confident in myself, like not even like when I was a kid, this is this has been really sad. Sorry, I keep bringing up like no, sad okay. stuff, but we're having good conversation. We so. th this on this podcast, we talk about sad shit. <laughs> we are here to ruin boners <laughs> one episode at a time. If you thought you were going to come on this show and you're going to hear some hot shit. We sorry. will get to that later. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So what was I saying? I have to humanize her first before you can objectify her. <laughs> so what were you? Sorry, what were you saying? Um, I was saying that you grew up in a house where you felt, you didn't feel like you could be yourself. Do you feel like you can be yourself now? Yeah, um, but with the anxiety. Um, so I wasn't taught certain skills that I need, you know, um, money, like how to, you know, and everything. Taxes, my. That, that is like. That is such an issue with so many people. And yeah. like, it makes me fucking crazy that schools don't teach you yeah, like was... financial responsibility. They'll teach you like home ec, like yeah. how to bake a fucking pie <laughs> or how to like build a wood box, but they don't teach you life yeah. skills. Like yeah. wh why? Yeah, well, there's a lot of like fake 16 and pregnant people walking around with fake bellies and stuff. Like I've seen like men with the fake pregnant bellies on that I went to school with. Wow. Like, you've been the home at classes because it was just easy. Oh. You know, but yeah. I oh, was that like the whole um, this, like you have to take care of an egg to learn like how yeah. difficult it is to like yeah. have a baby? So there would be any men that joined the class would just get to walk around with, with a pregnant bellies with a for pregnant their belly. assignment. Like, this is what it likes to feel pregnant, yeah. which, by the way, isn't even fucking close to what it's like to feel pregnant. Like, there is so much more than goes on. They're just having a big fucking belly. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's funny. But, um, yeah, so I, I got I just I deal with a lot of anxiety and just trying to figure out myself as an adult now. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I deal with a lot of and the anxiety comes from stemming from like being told this is wrong. This is wrong my whole mm -hmm. life. So, you know, if I'm on set. And I'm about to do a scene. Sometimes I might like almost feel like I'm about to have a panic attack because I was always told nakedness is wrong. This is wrong. You know, like so hard to unlearn that. Yeah. Stuff. And so I'm trying to unlearn it. And I try to remember, but I try to break it down and be like, but why is it wrong? Mm -hmm. And try and really break it down and realize it's not me. It's it's just what I've been taught. And so, yeah, that's the hardest part I'm struggling with now. Um being myself like my true self I would say yeah I mean I think that's really impressive that you've gotten as far as you've gotten at the age of 28 because I feel like we spend our entire lives trying to unlearn the bad things that we internalized when we were yeah. kids you know what I mean because that's mm -hmm. just like burned into your brain definitely I mean they say that your brain is pretty much fully hard hardwired by the time you're nine that's in crazy. terms of the way that you react to certain stimuli and responses and stuff like that so if you're growing up in an environment where the act of sex or nakedness was always shamed and put down so that like triggers a certain like mm -hmm. reaction in your brain, like you're, you're the dendrites of your brain literally follow certain paths depending on like how often certain thought processes and my occur. And dug like yeah. deep for this naked stuff. What's so interesting is that you can actually completely, you can change your brain chemistry over time like with practices and stuff like that, like thought practices. It's almost like, you know, your brain follows these well-worn paths, right? It's like if you walk the same trail every day, yeah. right? So if you walk the same trail of negativity every day, yeah. it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And the t path to positivity is a road less traveled, right? Yeah. It's got like bushes and brambles growing over yeah. it and no one's hiked that way. But if you start to take that road to positivity more and more often, you start to wear down that trail. You start to push aside those branches. And then the road to negativity starts to become overgrown. So it's like. 
That's what I'm trying to do but right now. It's, <laughs> it's but hard. it takes practice. It takes it's years. So it's like, it's a lot of work. So I have to commend yeah. you for even acknowledging that and like working on that. That's, yeah, I think. I'm trying. A big part of it. <laughs> I'm 45 and I feel like I still haven't figured my shit out. So like, <laughs> I feel like you're going to be a wise old sage by the time you're my age. You're going to be like, let me tell you how to live your life. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> you'll be at the top of a mountain and you'll be, everybody will come I'll to be you sitting for there like cross-legged. Yes. <laughs> Meditating. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know what? Let's take a commercial break because I feel like I've now we're getting to the sexy parts. Oh yeah, and we got we got to put a little bit of of space between the sad humanizing. I'm just trying to figure myself out part, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about anal or something like that. Yeah, that'll make you guys happy. I love anal. It's great. <laughs> so stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're all looking for ways to spice up things in the bedroom, right? Well, I've got something that will not only impress your partner, but lead to stronger, more intense orgasms. Introducing Popstar for bigger loads and better taste for the ladies. Popstar isn't just any men's supplement. It's designed for those firework moments. I'm talking stronger, more intense orgasms that you and your partner will absolutely love. Imagine the pleasure, the connection, the wow factor, the confidence in the bedroom. Now, here's the kicker. Popstar actually makes your ejaculate taste better, which, you know, we personally appreciate it. It gives it like a sweet pineapple flavor because we all know spitters are quitters. I mean, who knew that science could be this delicious? And they're serious about health. They're vegan, non-GMO, fair trade, all natural. It's not only effective, but it's safe and healthy to put in your body. If you're a bit skeptical, they have a 60-day money-back guarantee. So you really can't lose. Why not give it a try? Boost your game and let's make those intimate moments unforgettable. So to all the guys listening and the ladies who love them, make sure that you check out Popstar and see what the buzz is all about. With hundreds of five-star reviews, it's worth a try. Use code HOLLY for an extra 20% off of your first order. You can go to popstarlabs.com slash HOLLY or search for Popstar Pills on Amazon. All right, guys, we are back. So um, before we get to the anal and all the the parts that (laughs) I promised you were sexy, um, there was one thing that you said to me when I uh, asked you to send me some information about yourself is that you don't believe in dinosaurs. No. That's all bullshit. Okay. Please explain this to me. Whoever made up, that what a good thing to make up for money, right? Holy crap. Museums all across the world full of a bunch of fake bones. Why do you think it's fake? Because they are fake. They're all casts made of the real thing. Have you ever met somebody that dug up bones and you've seen them dig up bones? I mean, I don't hang out with a bunch of paleontologists, so I have to say, like, no. Yeah, but... I've asked hundreds of people this question. Nobody has ever been around somebody who like isn't. Yeah, my cousin digs up dinosaurs. Yeah, my my uncle works for this person who has di- like dinosaur bones in there, blah, blah, blah. Nothing. So I'm like, this is bullshit. But if I don't you believe consider- in evolution. Oh, I don't. Oh. OK, do your did your parents believe in evolution? Th- this kind you of. You came from a Christian background, so. Yeah, but. I got more mainly pushed into Christianity, not Mm -hmm. because they necessarily were the best Christians Mm -hmm. themselves. Okay. Um, But yeah, no, I just, I didn't believe in, I've never believed in evolution. It doesn't make sense to me. Why, why are there still monkeys walking around if we came from monkeys? Mm -hmm. You know, where's the middle ground people that are still transitioning? You know? I think they all died off. Well, I just don't believe, I don't know. I don't believe in it. I think it's, I'm more of like a, I have to like witness it to actually believe it type person. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in like spirits or any of that kind well, of that, stuff. Well, that's, that's different. That's not scientifically proven. So you don't <laughs> believe, you don't believe like in the scientific method. What about, I mean, there's so many things in the world then that you haven't witnessed firsthand. So you don't believe in like any of those things? Some things, like some things just don't make sense to me. I can't imagine that there is something as tall as a skyscraper, like walking around, stepping on things, eating things. Like I can't, I, that is so, that's like telling me there's a realist, a real tooth fairy. Like that just doesn't make, King Kong actually exists. 
Like, it's it's pretty fucking crazy, like to imagine the size of the dinosaurs and how they existed and how they were able to sustain themselves. It's it's pretty crazy. I mean, I believe in dinosaurs, but <laughs> you know, like, don't move me yeah, like this don't, fucking crazy. Yeah, don't, 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 <laughs> please, like, you're gonna get. Let me tell you, like, you're gonna get fucking messages from a lot of angry paleontologists. Good, good. Send them to me. I want to see all your videos of you discovering the bones. You know what you should do? You should do like a special video where you meet a paleontologist. And he like shows you real dinosaur bones and like I'm takes still, you on an expedition. But to me, I'm like, I need to actually discover them myself. You need to discover the bones. I don't yourself. believe it. Like it's all phony baloney. Like them sent, showing me, oh, this is a big. We don't have the rest of the bones, but we have all these ones. You know, we have a mummified person from a million years ago, but we don't have. You know, this. I just, I, I hate science. I don't believe in it. <laughs> Science is stupid. <laughs> so I will say, um, so my daughter's obsessed with dinosaurs, as all children are. Um, if you go to the Natural History Museum, you can actually, there's a, there's a whole section where you can watch real paleontologists work on real dinosaur bones. Mm-hmm. That's what they told you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a nice thing, but you, I, I but feel you like, guys had a good time watching that. I feel <laughs> I like know. I am not going to convince you that dinosaurs are Hell real no. in this episode. This is not going to happen. No, I need, like I said, I need to be there. I need to trip over something in the desert and be like, holy shit, I just found a T-Rex. You know what I mean? That's what I need to <laughs> believe in that. You know what's crazy is that they are coming, and I only know this literally because I have a three-year-old and like we read tons of books on dinosaurs. I know you're not going to believe this, but um, it's really interesting. They've come out with so many new species of dinosaurs. There's like 50 new species of dinosaurs discovered every year, Yeah, which is fucking bananas. Didn't they do that with like Harry Potter and all the Twilights and shit? They just kept coming out with more <laughs> to produce more fucking money. Yeah, but I don't think they like <laughs> found Harry Potter books like buried in like the desert. I don't know. And then or under know, a riverbed. And then they know what they look too. I'm like, how do you know what the skin looks like that it was furry? Well, so what they do is they they um, compare them to other creatures that live today that so that like there's a likelihood. And that's why there's so much speculation around dinosaurs and why scientists don't necessarily agree on certain species and how they work, because there is a lot of conjecture for sure. Yeah. Until it's nailed down, I don't believe in it <laughs> until they figure their shit out. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, I challenge you, audience. I know there's paleontologists watching this um, because it's just such a wide array of people. Um, you need to convince Dan that dinosaurs exist. And telling me I'm dumb because I don't believe in dinosaurs isn't convincing me either. There you, you go. You have to have actual facts and you stuff. Need to, she doesn't believe in science, but she'd like the scientific method <laughs> to prove it to her. <laughs> exactly. Come with facts. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about one thing that you do believe in, anal. Yes. You say that you prefer anal over anything else. Can like regular sex. Okay. Um, I would say with a partner. Mm -hmm. I always I've always said I prefer anal over regular sex, but I definitely should say with a partner. Okay. I don't prefer like if I'm just making a scene, I definitely would rather just to regular sex. But okay. for pleasure wise, to me it's just more pleasurable. Don't mm -hmm. know why. Just mm -hmm. always been that way for me. Um, yeah, just a, a booty girl. Well, so uh, this is something that I learned from Lucy Hart, actually. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, that everybody has a different... So obviously everyone's like buttholes are slightly different, but your anal cavity is different too in terms of how straight it is, how angled it might be, etc. And certain people's anal cavity just accommodates a penis easier than other people's. Yeah. And apparently you can even have surgery to fix your anal cavity Don't. to take dick easier. Don't though, because I, my, I'll just say somebody I know, they definitely don't want me to say their name. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm just going to say somebody I know actually had their butthole fell out because of like hemorrhoids and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they got their butthole refixed and they it got was, so it prolapsed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they got their butt fixed and it was it's they still deal with it to this day. The prolapsing? Like, uh, of no, just issues of it, hurting of it, like different 
like if there's one thing to not ever get surgery on, it's it's the butthole. Mm. Like don't ever mess with your butthole because mm. that muscle is so like you don't want stuff falling out of there. Yeah, no, definitely. You want to keep that muscle, <laughs> that sphincter. Um. Speaking of buttholes, you've also said that you don't uh, trust people who've never seen their own butthole because they are liars. Yeah. Um, so liars. Can you elaborate on that? So many men uh, go into a room. If you're in a, like a new place, just ask. Like if you feel comfortable, be like, like men, have you ever seen your own butthole? If, they say, <laughs> if you feel comfortable. Yeah. Like, if you go to a new place and you feel comfortable. So yeah. If you're, you know, like. Yeah. Just ask them, have you seen your own butthole? If they say no. That's such bullshit. Who's never seen their own butthole? Then you know they're a liar and you know you can't trust them. You know you uh, can't trust them as far as you can throw them. So I, okay, so aligned with that, I had a boyfriend who swore to me that he'd never tasted his own cum. And bullshit. I did not believe that. That's that bullshit. I did not believe. He's a liar. He's That's embarrassed what I said. about his sex life. Why are we embarrassed about yeah, sex? Yeah, I was like, why would you not want, like, if you're going to make another girl swallow your cum, don't you think that you should have an idea of what it tastes like? I, I'm always tasting myself and it's, before before I'm with somebody. It's yeah. respect. And I'm it's just, like making lasagna and not tasting it or something. Yeah. Like, like for the first time and then you serve it to like, people like or something like right that, you know you have to taste before you get yeah i did i did honestly believe that he was a liar and it was so funny too because he was like of course i haven't like and i could tell from his reaction that he was worried that i was like accusing him of being gay <laughs> because he'd he, like traces his, you know what i mean Lee, you know yeah. some guys are so afraid to be accused of being like yeah gay like they're so fucking homophobic they're like i don't you yeah. know i've never tasted my own cum like what am i gay and it's like no, I didn't ask if you tasted other men's cum. Yeah. Like, I asked if you tasted your own, which comes Obviously. out of your penis, like, literally once a day because men <laughs> masturbate all the fucking time. Yeah. Like, okay, if you masturbate once a day, like most men, that's 365 days a year times, like, you know, however old you are from the day that you started masturbating, which was probably in your, like, fucking mid-teens, right? Mm -hmm. Not once, not once you tasted your cum. I don't. That's it's bullshit. it's bullshit. Yeah, it's all bullshit. I don't even remember a time in my life where I didn't know what my vagina tasted like. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've just always known. I feel like yeah, it's just something that you check. It's just personal hygiene. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's like you know how like monkeys like pick things off their body. Yeah. I feel like it's like they like you should be smell smelling. <laughs> like it should be like your natural instinct. Yeah. You know. You want to like check everything's okay down there. Yeah. Because exactly. you know we have different days our ph level changes we you know have 100%. periods and you know it's not it's not always the same mm -hmm. every day is a different day for your vagina it's oh whenever i tell like my friends like who aren't in the industry about like boric acid I, i'll straight up be like oh if you have, find a day where you taste a little off blah, blah blah i'll just straight up say it like if you find a day where you taste off i don't even ask them like do you taste yourself i'll just be like i'll just assume that they do you know mm -hmm. and i'll be like use this you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's interesting how when you get into the adult industry and you start like having sex for a living, how comfortable you become about talking about hygiene and yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like girls definitely kind of swap stories and educate each other on yeah. like the best ways to keep yourself clean and prevent yeast infections and stuff like that, which is just like a lovely like sisterhood. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's so supportive. It's for the most part. It's very yeah. supportive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any onset anal horror stories no i don't do anal on set like with anybody i just do okay, it so like you prefer my, it but then you it's you, my personal life thing. in your personal life yeah. but you keep it from everybody else yeah well how do we know how do we know if you like anal if you don't if we don't see it well i could be a big fat liar but you could be a big fat liar but who knows? just like those fucking paleontologists <laughs> i know fucking if you're not showing us on camera that you I like do anal, show on camera though i just don't i only do it with like couple like there's really i did it more in Mich michigan because mm -hmm. where i had people i worked with where i was really comfortable with mm -hmm. um but i do it with people i'm comfortable with and that's very small select people um so you've only done it like for your only fans is what you're saying yeah i don't do it professionally because right. i don't want to poop on anybody and be that girl who pooped on somebody you know I mean, and everybody has like, yeah, I mean, they, like, like that's a they thing. They don't know, but like, it they, happens a lot. It does happen, and like, but people, everyone takes it. Look, if you're somebody who works on porn and somebody has a poop accident and you don't take that shit in stride, then you're not a professional. Like we've yeah. all seen it. Like nobody freaks out. It's not. 
that big. But I just, I'm not ready yet. And I'm sure I'll get there soon because yeah. I'm a very quick adapter, you mm-hmm. know, like to take things on. It's just like more of a, n- a nerve thing. Yeah. I one time tried to douche my ass before an anal scene. Mm. Yeah, no, I had to cancel that scene. I've never done that. What happened? <laughs> You know, like people give themselves enemas. Yeah, I know. I know. That's what I'm thinking because I'm like, okay, the enema and douche, they're both liquid, but obviously they're different kinds of liquids. So like, what wait, why the- are they different liquids? I don't know. I just assumed they were. I always pour the liquid. I just pour the liquid out of the douche and I refill the douche. With water. Yeah. But when you do an Is enema-, enema. not water? Is that why my butt hurts so fucking bad when I gave so myself an anal douche? I don't know. I literally, you know that feeling when you like have the runs and you're like, I'm sick. Like yeah. you start sweating. Yeah. That's what happened the second I squeezed the bottle into my butt. But did you empty out the bottle and put in water? Yeah. And so I just it wasn't. I, I got so sick. I was like. <sighs> so because in douche, it's like a vinegar solution, right? Like a very some, some mild yeah. di- vinegar solution. So even though you took the water out, there might have been some vinegar residue left. No, no. This was just a, a matter of getting water in my butt. I found out if I get water in my butt, it makes me feel like I have to throw up. Huh. <laughs> so you've never had a colonic? Like a one by a doctor? Yeah. No. no. Well, not one by anybody else either, but. Yeah. Well, <laughs> colonics are, they're intense. Yeah. Tom. It's like the most uncomfortable 45 minutes of your life. No. I feel great after. My brother used to have to drink all that shit to get his intestines cleared out mm. and all that stuff. But no, I've never had anything like that. So did you ever try an actual enema or did you only no, try to douche I just as tried an the enema? Douche, like, and and then, you had a bad experience. Yeah, and then it got the water got trapped up there too. So later yeah, on that can happen. later on I was walking and it all of a sudden just was like my water broke. Oh no. I what, was your like butt water. My butt water broke. I was like, what is this bullshit? I go, so I go tell everybody now, don't douche your ass before a scene. Oh, no. Yeah. Where crap. were you? I was at my house. I canceled okay, the good. scene. You were, okay. I canceled the scene okay. right away. You like, like the, the, the second gro- I went. You weren't like the grocery store. No. I think I stayed home. I felt like I had the flu. I was so, I was like, this is horrible. Wow. It like, it's something like, you know how like when you touch your, the mm-hmm. little dangly thing makes you feel like you got a gag? Mm-hmm. I have that mm-hmm. in my butt. Yeah, you have a gag reflex. In yeah, your butt. I do. Yeah, you love anal. That's so interesting. Yeah, wait, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we, I keep just being. I'm a hypocrite all over this podcast today. I don't know what's going on. So, um, you were open about um, trying Ozempic, which mm-hmm. I'm interested in because that's something that, you know, like it's like the drug weight loss drug to the stars now and so many people are on it so many people in the adult industry are on it and it's been uh it's been really like interesting to see like all these people have gotten really skinny Mm -hmm. but then there's also a lot of conversation around the concern that it's very bad for your body and very damaging and cause like permanent digestion issues. So what was your experience? I hate it. I'm on it now. Um, I use it. Oh, so you wrong- are on it now. Yeah. I use but it. But you the- hate it. Yeah. I use it the wrong way though. I use it a little bit different than the way other people use it. Okay. So I'm on semaglutide, which is basic. It's just sister drug to mm-hmm. Ozempic. Um, and it makes me feel so sick. The drug, the dose that you, everybody starts with, that made me so sick that I had to go even below. Like I'm on like the smallest dose you can possibly be on for it. When you say sick, like like how like what did it make you, you feel I like? I couldn't eat. I was sweating. I was throwing up. Um, yeah. I went to the hospital because my the mix of my anxiety with <clears throat> um, like not the not hungry. Like I just couldn't eat or drink. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to get the I, guy come to my house. Cause you can do that here in California, luckily. And then he gave me an IV, you know, so I could get some fluids in me. Um, so it just makes you feel really bad. And so I, I, now I'm on a really, really smaller dose and I just take it when I start like getting really hungry again. Mm-hmm. Like when my appetite comes back and I'm like eating like four times, like four meals a day and mm-hmm. um, all the time, then I just do a tiny dose mm-hmm. and then it gets my appetite down again. Mm -hmm. But I have no, like you said, digestion. There's only, like, I can only eat certain things when I'm on it. 
Like mm-hmm. other things just sit in my stomach forever. It feels like 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 you're not digesting. Your yeah, food like properly. you don't digest it like fully. Some things like what like carbs or yeah, like I feel like the only thing I really eat when I'm out in Ozempic is acai bowls, and and that. And my sugars, it's a sugar med, right? It's for diabetes. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I'm only eating sugar too, like even if it's natural sugar, I'm sure this isn't good for me. Like something's, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's not good. But I'm also plastic. I'm a short way out or quick way out girl, you know, plastic surgery girly. I'm a, you know, lipo girly, all that stuff. So I'm a quick way out girl. But I tried to lose the like 10 pounds I wanted um, and by eating healthy exercising and I just couldn't like, yeah no I, I get it I get it like I used to be able to when I was younger yeah. but I think I'm finally at a point where I just can't like get these extra ones off as easy anymore you know it's hard and I remember when I was in college if I felt like I was putting on some weight I would just like literally eat tuna bowls like with tuna for dinner mm-hmm. every night and then like in four days I'd be back to like whatever I wanted to be yeah um, but it's definitely harder to lose it when you get older. And I mean, I, I understand where you're at because I got lipo um, in July mm-hmm. and that was after I had a baby. And I really and I remember like when I when I talked about it, there was a lot of criticism that I got, which is normal. And look, like I think people should be suspicious of plastic surgery simply because like it can be dangerous and you want to make sure that yeah. you do it correctly. So I don't think that like everybody should buy into it automatically. So I'm mm-hmm. totally down for people who are like, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Like I understand that. Yeah. But um, yeah, for me, I mean, I really tried to eat healthy. I, you know, went to the gym and you know, I like, I go to orange theory, which is like a very I know. hard I, class. So I like, I'm not like, once. yeah, I'm not Never like fucking again. around. Like I'm really trying. Yeah, you definitely and, are. Um, but I'm also like, I'm not somebody who has the time or the inclination to go to the gym every single day for two hours mm-hmm. and to eat like only salads. Like, you know, I have a life. Mm-hmm. So I thought about it for a while and I was just kind of like, you know what? I work really hard to make money. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of like where my focus is. So I'm going to use the money that I've worked very hard for to achieve these results that I've been unable to get at the gym with mm-hmm. hard work. But like, I don't have the focus where I'm going to go to the gym two yeah. hours a day, every day. So, and for me, that felt like a fair trade off. Yeah. And who cares? It's your body anyway. So yeah, if exactly. you wanted to do the opposite of lipo, get, if you wanted to fill your body up, who cares? Like, yeah. you know, it's yeah. your body. You can do what you want. Like, yeah, I, I, that's why I'm so open about my surgery. I have there's some girls that in the porn industry that I hang out with and we'll be with people and they'll be like, oh, I like, you know, I like this on you. And they'll be like, like, did you get any work? And they'll be like, no. And I'm like, girl, I know where scars are for that. Yeah. I see them. You know, like when we were drunk, you told me you had surgery, mm-hmm. you know, like stuff like that. And yeah. I'm like, you're doing nobody favors by lying about it. And that's a thing I think that people are so ashamed to talk about having plastic surgery because Weird. they feel like they should be the kind of person who gets there naturally or who is naturally like that. And the, the truth is, is like that is not the case mm-hmm. for 99 percent of the people on the fucking planet. Yeah. You know, and if you want to use some other methods to achieve the look that you want, I think you should be honest about it because it's not fair to other people who might look at that person and be like, God, they're so perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess they're just like that. And like, I'm just like this. And, you know, but if you can understand that, like they took these extra steps to get there, I think that that it just it's just more honest. Yeah. You I know, and it doesn't set agree. like unreasonable expectations for yeah. people to have about themselves and their bodies. Yeah. No, I completely agree. It's just better to be honest about it. But. Yeah. There's something, and I personally, like, I love people that just fucking own their shit. Yeah. There's something very refreshing about honesty, you know, yeah. in a world where we're just all so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Including all those paleontologists yeah. out there. Freaking dinosaur liars. <laughs> dinosaur liars. <laughs> just make a bunch of shirts made. <laughs> Uh, so you just branched out into shooting professional scenes for browsers. Yeah, I love my, them. I love them too. They're my people. They're so nice. Um, so what made you want to film with studios and what made you decide to pick them? Because they're the best. That's I mean, why I picked them. I know that, but <laughs> the audience may need to hear why. Um, no, they're just known for being the best, honestly. Um, 
that's what made me want to work with them. Every All the top people work with them. Um, I branched out because I wanted to, you know, it's, I'm, I'm a Twitch girl, right? I'm a Twitch girl who gets naked. But now I'm a porn girl and a Twitch girl. So mm-hmm. by doing browsers, it just kind of opens me up to a whole new audience, you know. Like there's a TikTok audience. There's a porn audience. There's a Twitch audience. There's, you know, Instagram. And I was nowhere in the porn audience. Mm-hmm. But now I am because I'm in, like working with browsers. So mm-hmm. that's good. Tell us about your scene that you did for them. Um, well, I've done a couple scenes for them. Um, like, well, not even like I've done like promos, like days mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and it's just been really good. My first scene got released this year, uh, which was um, the Come Blast podcast <laughs> <laughs> with Manuel Ferreira. Um, that was good. It was it was funny. It was like a little like sneaky, you know, they're a little a sneaky scenario. Uh huh. Um, and yeah, it was good. Browsers loves their sneaky scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, oh, we're having sex under a table. But that was it. Here and nobody knows that I'm having sex that under a it. table. That was it. That was literally my scene. <laughs> literally every browser scene. <laughs> and it's such a bitch to shoot, too, because like I remember I'd get the script from them and I'd be like, fuck, now I got to find a table that you can see underneath it. And, you know what I mean? Like, That's funny. It got to the point where I was like, okay, they, like, they were quite, I would have to find out what the scene was before I could book the location. Yeah. Because they require very specific furniture. Yeah. Like if you have to be able to see something happening underneath the table, yeah. I can't have a table that, you know, is enclosed on all sides. It has to be open and not all locations have that kind of table. Yeah. So it became kind of like a thing where I was like, I need to know what I'm shooting because you're going to give me some fucking scene that I can't shoot there because like I can't see under the table. Yeah. Manuel had to get out of his chair and go on his knees and pretend he was in a chair. Like, it yeah. Was, yeah, it was hard. Lots but. of camera magic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is porn your long-term career plan or do you have other life goals outside of it? I don't plan to do this forever. I just want to make enough money to do my animal stuff. And then I want to do my streaming and all that. You know, I would, I'm, yeah, I just want to get away. It's a lot of, a lot of work and it's a lot of mental struggle with that. What we were talking about earlier. It's mm-hmm. just a lot on my mental, um, this industry trying to handle what I was taught when I was yeah. younger and mm-hmm. you know so it's a lot so I'm trying to get out of it by the time I hit like 35 I'm hoping mm-hmm. um I'm in invest all my money right now and that's try and, smart yeah I'm trying to move over to animals around 35 mm-hmm. but we'll see <laughs> we'll see what's your so what's your ultimate dream with animal rescue well I wanted to open up an animal sanctuary but then when I came here I realized that dogs were a bigger issue like dogs in shelters were a bigger issue than Mm -hmm. like that's it's not as big of an issue in Michigan or in northern states in general like the colder states because there's not as many stray animals so they don't have kill shelters but like here it's like so bad so I um so I kind of tweaked my dream a little bit and I think I want to go towards like dog transportation where you transfer like dogs from you know packed facilities to least packed facilities lesser pack facilities Mm -hmm. that's what i want to do i think but we'll Mm -hmm. see what the problem is with animals when i'm 35 hopefully that's not a problem anymore yeah like yeah so yeah well i love that yeah well thank you so much for coming on um i do have a couple of questions for you for my patreon members which we will save for another quick little segment after this if that's okay cool sounds good and then can you tell everybody where they can find you online I am the Dan Dangler on everything. Even if it doesn't pop up, search it because I'm probably shadow banned. So just search <laughs> it. It's there. The Dan Dangler. All one word. Perfect. <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Of course, if you want to support this podcast, watch these videos while they're streamed live and get access to special bonus Q&As like the one we're about to do. Go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'll see you next week.